O Lord of hosts, stretch forth, we pray, your almighty arm to strengthen and protect Canada's armed forces in every peril of, of land and sea and air. Shelter them in the days of battle and keep them safe from all evil. Endue them with loyalty and courage and grant that in all things they may serve to build your peaceful kingdom, O God Almighty. Amen. <clears throat> The peace which God gives and passes our understanding be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Père, le Fils et le Saint-Esprit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. For the next few moments, we're going to have the privilege of having Mr. Andrew Birch from the War Museum give a little presentation. And then after his presentation, we're free to go and take a look at the 1974 peacekeeping display that's been set up for this weekend. It happens to be a coincidence, but it's all about us. Airborne. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Gallipo, veterans, serving CF members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Canadian War Museum. Nous sommes très heureux d'accueillir cette cérémonie qui marque le 35e anniversaire de la crise de Chypre. Today I will make a few brief comments about the Canadian War Museum's new Cyprus display, and then you will be free to visit the exhibitions. The Canadian War Museum is Canada's national museum for military history. In its research, exhibitions, and programs, the museum informs its visitors how war has shaped Canada from 5,000 years ago to the present day. Our display about the Cyprus mission is located in our permanent Gallery 4, A Violent Peace, The Cold War, Peacekeeping, and Recent Conflicts, 1945 to the present. This gallery was designed to illustrate how, in the post-war period, Canada became a significant contributor to the Cold War in Korea and in the NATO alliance, and a leading participant in international peacekeeping operations. Both activities carried significant risk. La présentation sur Chypre est un élément central de la section de la Galerie 4 sur les opérations de maintien de la paix des Nations Unies, laquelle explique comment le Canada a envoyé ses soldats courir des risques sous la bannière de l'ONU afin d'empêcher que les conflits locaux ne dégénèrent en guerre entre les superpuissances. Aujourd'hui, vous verrez également les autres présentations de cette section où sont décrites les contributions canadiennes à la première opération traditionnelle maintien de la paix à Suez, la mission au Congo en 1960 et les missions d'observation. Les Canadiens ont servi dans plus de 90 opérations internationales de soutien de la paix depuis 1945 et le musée a sélectionné ces missions pour leur importance historique et leur caractère représentatif. So, why install a major display about Cyprus? Uh, to begin, it was the longest traditional peacekeeping mission to which Canada contributed. Uh, the Canadian contribution uh, to UNFASIP was launched in March 1964 to prevent violence between the island's Greek and Turkish populations from causing a war between Greece and Turkey, two members of NATO and representing the alliance's southern flank ringing the Warsaw Pact. The British had also used the tiny island of Cyprus as an air and sea base that could be used to strike the Soviet Union if the Cold War turned hot. The United Nations mission to which you contributed separated the combatants and kept the peace while diplomats attempted, often fruitlessly, to resolve the root causes of the conflict. Few in Canada realized in 1964 that their troops would be stationed on the island for two generations. Yet by 1993, when major contribution, uh, Canadian contribution ended, 59 rotations of Canadian soldiers, over 35,000 had served there, many on more than one rotation. As many of you in the audience will immediately recall, most of the Canadian tours on the island were uneventful, hot, boring, and monotonous, as soldiers in observation posts noted minor ceasefire violations, lodged protests with the national forces, and did the mundane yet necessary work traditional peacekeeping entailed. Mais quand le premier commando au régiment aéroporté de Canada fut dépêché dans l'île en 1974, la plupart d'entre vous étiez de jeunes soldats aéroportés de, euh, de 18 à 20 ans, et rares étaient ceux qui avaient une expérience de maintien de la paix. En fait, comme certains d'entre vous me l'ont dit, vous vous attendiez que à ce que la période de service de 1974 soit aussi peu excitante que tous les autres au cours des dix années précédentes. 
Cette situation changeait euh, de façon inattendue quand un coup d'État militaire d'inspiration grecque dans l'île provoqua l'invasion de celle-ci par les forces nationales turques, qui s'empara euh, de 40 de Chypre. Les contingents canadiens et d'autres de l'ONU se retrouvaient pris au milieu d'intenses combats et firent de leur mieux pour respecter le mandat de leur mission face à cette violence. The Canadian Airborne Regiment distinguished itself in these difficult circumstances as you, the soldiers, secured key buildings in the name of the United Nations, evacuated diplomatic corps and foreign nationals and civilians uh, from the Cypriot capital and the city of Nicosia. On numerous occasions, young Canadians found themselves dodging bullets and mortar fire, staring down Turkish tanks and angry Greek Cypriot crowds. As Lester Pearson himself said when he authorized the mission in 64, peacekeeping operations are very rarely easy. They are uncertain in duration, and they are very often subject to unfortunate incidents. That summer, the Canadian contingent suffered two fatalities that you've gathered here today to honor, and suffered many other casualties, a tragic cost of the necessary and difficult work of UN peacekeeping. What you will see today in our permanent gallery uh, is the new uh, permanent gallery graphic display that tells the story of the Canadian contingent in Cyprus in 1974 using photographs, documents, oral histories, and artifacts contributed by those who served there. Our visitors will learn how the Canadians reacted to the invasion, your actions and major engagements at Nicosia International Airport and Camp Kronberg, and about Canadian casualties there. We believe the displays are representative of the Canadian experience during that hot summer, though we recognize we cannot tell every story. In the months to come, the Canadian War Museum shall complete the installation of a large-scale reconstruction of a typical Canadian OP in Cyprus and of a Nicosia streetscape where Canadians served for nearly 40 years. These new components will incorporate additional exhibition elements, uh, such as a, a peacekeeping a video of the history of peacekeeping, uh, inset video monitors where visitors will be able to, to see the many personal photographs uh, taken by soldiers in Cyprus, such as those you're seeing on the screens here, and an audio station that will permit visitors to hear the sounds of war in Cyprus as they were, were recorded at the time by members of uh, one commando and two commando, and hear the recollection, recollections of Canadian veterans of the mission provided in oral history interviews. I would like to thank the reunion organizers for the opportunity to speak before this distinguished audience. The new Cyprus display is the product of the work of many hands, those of museum staff and of veterans from the 74 crisis, you who are assembled here today, contributing their photographs, reminiscences, and documents for use. La nouvelle exposition sur ship est le fruit, est le fruit, euh, fruit de travail de nombreuses personnes, celui de personnel du musée et d'anciens commandants ayant participé à la crise supérieure de 1974 qui sont rassemblés ici aujourd'hui et qui nous ont confié leurs photos, leurs souvenirs et les documents utilisés dans l'exposition. Thanks are due to Brigadier General Clay Beatty, André Bisson, Bill Dixon, Joe Drouin, Major General Alain Forin, Alain Godet, Claude Graton, Colonel Pierre Leblanc, Don McKenzie, Master Warrant Officer Norman Marion, Ian Nichol, Jack Novak, Sergeant Michel Plouffe, Dan Segan, Tom Walton, and so many others who generously shared their stories with us and patiently answered our questions here in Montreal and in Edmonton. Thanks also to the Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps Museum for the loan of their artifacts to this display. In closing, it is my uh, pleasure to invite you to tour the museum. I shall be present in Gallery 4 during your visit to welcome you to the new Cypress display and to answer any questions you may have about our, fu our future installations. Thank you. Merci.